Welcome to the Click Podcast. I'm Danny Watson, a mindset and manifestation expert and founder of The Click, a company that helps women overcome their fears and limiting beliefs to create a life and business that they love. Within this podcast, I will help you get clear on what you want, identify the blocks that are holding you back, transform your mindset and raise your vibration so that you can co-create magic with the universe. If you are looking to design a life that truly sets your soul on fire and manifests more success and abundance, then you are in the right place. Hello ladies. So for this episode, I want to dive into why self-love is the secret to successful manifesting. So self-love has been a bit of a buzzword over the last few years. Um, with people preaching about how to practice self-love. And often what I see happening is people confusing self-love with self-care. And there really is a difference. Self-care, the way I see it, is really about the practical things that we can do for ourselves to nurture our bodies, to nurture our energy, um, to um, help us relax. So self-care might be taking a bubble bath, it might be doing a yoga session, it might be, you know, spending some time meditating. Those are the things that I would equate with self-care. Self-love, on the other hand, is far more than bubble baths and mani pedis. True self-love goes much deeper than this. Self-love is really about turning inwards and identifying where you have thoughts and beliefs that you're holding on to that are not serving you and actually doing the work to change those beliefs. Self-love is really about silencing that inner critic that's telling you you can't do it, you're not good enough, you're not worthy enough, and actually changing that to a new, more empowering narrative. Now, whilst things like a bubble bath or a mani-pedi or a yoga session, whilst those things may make you feel good for a short while, If ultimately you are holding on to all of these negative beliefs about yourself and what is possible for you and what you're capable of, you'll actually find that the positive effect of self-care will be very short-lived. So no amount of mani-pedis or bubble baths are actually going to be able to change what is going on within you. And so this is why self-love really is about going inwards. Self-care is about short-term fixes, things that we can do to make ourselves feel better in the short term. And these things can actually contribute to our overall sense of self-love. But really true self-love, as I mentioned, it's about doing the inner work. Now, what does self-love have to do with manifesting? Well, it in fact has everything to do with manifesting because we are the product of our thoughts and our beliefs. So what we experience in our physical world is dependent on what we believe about ourselves. So if we believe we are not worthy of receiving something, we are unlikely to then manifest it into our life. If we believe that we don't deserve something, whether that's we don't believe we deserve success, we don't believe we deserve to be rich, we're going to really struggle to actually manifest the physical presence of that thing. Now, I actually, when I started to kind of work on my mindset and really sort of start to strengthen my self-worth, I started to realize that everything that I had manifested in my life up until that point was a direct reflection of how I felt about myself. So just kind of going back a few years, when I think about, um, let's say, for example, um, the relationship that I was in, I was in a relationship with somebody that wasn't treating me right it was cheating on me. And I, what I didn't fully understand at the time was that that was largely because how, of how I felt about myself. Now, just to give this relationship a bit of context, this relationship was actually off the back of a time in my life where I had experienced a lot of rejection. So I went to uni to study law and A part of becoming a lawyer is you get a training contract with a firm. And I had spent pretty much a whole year um, sending applications to different law firms. And I probably sent over a hundred different applications. Some of them I didn't even hear back from. I got over 75 rejections. So 
that's a pretty big amount of rejections, right? A pretty large amount of people to say, no, you're not good enough. I mean, obviously they didn't say that directly, but I took that to mean I am not enough. I am not good enough. Going through all of that, it really, really knocked my self-esteem because I started to question about who I was and you know whether I was even on the right path. I was starting to doubt myself. I was starting to doubt my abilities. I was starting to doubt whether people liked me You know, because a lot of the time, especially in an interview scenario, people go off obviously your, your grades, but it's also off your personality. So I just felt like I wasn't being accepted. I felt this constant um, rejection and I didn't actually fully appreciate how much this is this affected me until I started years later doing this inner work and I realized that this is really this experience really affected my confidence and my sense of worth and when I then found myself in this relationship that wasn't serving me it almost felt that I couldn't let go of that because I didn't deserve more and here's the thing about manifesting as a law of attraction we get and we attract into our life what we believe we deserve, what we believe we are worthy of. And at that point, I didn't believe that I was worthy of more. And so I ended up manifesting a relationship which reiterated my belief of I am not enough. That relationship also made me feel not enough, not good enough, not worthy enough, because the person actually ended up cheating on me. So our beliefs are always going to be mirrored back to us in our physical reality. And so this is why self-love is so important, because if you have these negative beliefs about yourself, they're always going to be reinforced by your physical world. You're going to see them mirrored back to you in your physical world by the people you experience, um, the things you experience, the things that you manifest into your life. Um, What was really interesting as well is that I saw a direct correlation between my sense of worth and my financial situation. So our sense of worth or self-worth is a direct reflection of our net worth. And what was really interesting was that when my self-worth was at an all-time low, so were my finances. So I had managed to accumulate a pretty significant amount of debt, um, mainly on shopping for things that I don't even now remember spending my money on. And a part of me was wanting to numb the pain that I was feeling, that feeling of not being enough, the feeling of low self-worth, you know, that lack of confidence in in myself and, and my abilities and the pain that I was feeling from a relationship that wasn't serving me. So shopping was my, my emotional escape. And obviously that led to me then accumulating a pretty significant amount of debt but it was all interlinked. My sense of worth was having this direct impact on my finances. Then when it came to actually starting my business and manifesting money into my life and changing my finances, a lot of that required me to really strengthen my self-worth. A lot of that work that I did to change my financial reality was all to do with changing my beliefs about myself and what I was worth and what I was capable of and what I deserved. Because again, like if you believe you don't deserve something, if you believe you don't deserve to be wealthy or you don't deserve to be successful or you're not worthy or capable of being successful, then again, that's what you're going to experience in your physical world. I think where a lot of people go wrong with the law of attraction is they forget about this part. They assume that manifesting is just about thinking positive thoughts and positive things are gonna show up in your life. And of course that is partly the case, but we cannot escape from how we feel about ourselves. You know, and often how we feel about ourselves, it's things that we're suppressing. We're trying to kind of mask how we're really feeling about ourselves. So for example, even when I was at sort of my lowest point, I still was trying to convince myself that I was okay, that I was happy, I'm a positive person, I'm an outgoing person, I'm sociable. It almost felt shameful to admit that I was struggling with low self-worth. I didn't want to believe that about myself. I'd always kind of prided myself on the fact that I was really, really positive and optimistic about life. And so it was, yeah, it was a really difficult thing for me to accept. And I think I see this happening a lot, um, especially with women who do class themselves to be quite positive 
they don't want to admit that they're actually struggling with self-worth or limiting beliefs or negative thoughts about themselves. They'd rather sort of push those things below the surface. But when you do that, they just simply fester. So self-love is really about doing the work to identify what is really going on below the surface and actually what is going on within the subconscious mind. So the subconscious mind is actually the part of our brain that's controlling 80 to 90% of our outcomes. So what we experience in our physical world is largely due to our subconscious programming. And because the subconscious mind is hidden, we often don't fully appreciate what we actually think about ourselves. And this is where the road to self-love can actually feel a little bit uncomfortable. You know, when we think of self-love, we think of it as this really beautiful experience where we're caring for ourselves. But actually, my journey to self-love was a lot of tears, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration. When you start dragging all of those negative beliefs and you know, negative thoughts that you've been holding on to about yourself, perhaps for sometimes for a very long time, when you start bringing all of that to the surface, it can actually feel like things are getting worse before things are getting better. And actually, how I see this play out in the manifesting process is that often when people are on the journey to change their mindset, they start to think, oh my goodness, this isn't working for me because I'm starting to manifest all of this unwanted stuff into my life. And actually that's sometimes a good sign that things are in fact working because what you're doing is you're basically bringing all of your junk to the surface. And this is really important. You have to bring that junk to the surface in order to let it go. Now a really important part of this process is actually identifying where do those negative thoughts that you've got about yourself, those limiting beliefs, where do they originate from? You want to almost think of your belief system as a tower block of Jenga, um, so you know, like the, the Jenga puzzle, you know, tower block of Jenga pieces. And each of those Jenga pieces reflects one of your negative beliefs. And the bottom of the pile, so the bottom of the stack, these are the ones that are most deeply rooted into your subconscious mind. And let's say you start pulling away the pieces of the Jenga puzzle If you start to pull away the ones at the bottom, you may find that all of the other beliefs that are stacked on top of it also come crumbling down as well. So when you get to that core deep rooted belief and you attack it at the source, that's when you can start um, letting go of any other beliefs that have been stacked on top of that original belief. So this is where self-love Again, it's, it's really about going inwards, but also going backwards as well. Because often we need to find, well, where, where did I first learn how to talk to myself in this way? Where did I first adopt this belief? And we can start then really getting into the root of where this belief actually came from. Um, and from my experience and, and from working with my clients, for the majority of these beliefs, they're, they're formed at a very early age. So between the ages of naught and seven, when your brain is super receptive to everything that is going on around you, even just one throwaway away comment can actually have a huge impact on your belief system because you know children are like sponges, right? They just absorb everything. So maybe it was you know a teacher at school saying that project isn't good enough. You know, as a child, Because children are so egocentric, a child will automatically take that to be about themselves. Like, oh, I'm not good enough. It's not just about my work not being good enough. This means that I'm not good enough. You know, because children are very much, as I said, egocentric. So it's me, me, me. The world revolves around me. So the process of self-love then is going back into these early memories to identify where did you first start not loving yourself? What was the first belief that made you feel like you weren't worthy enough, that you weren't good enough, that you weren't enough? Where did that originate from? And how can we give that experience a new meaning so that it doesn't need to mean anything about you and your sense of worth? How can we go back into that memory and reframe it so that, you know, we see it for what it is? Remember, as as I said, like children, because they're egocentric, they make everything about them. But then as an adult, we can actually get a different perspective on things. We can use our logic to make us realize, well, actually what that person said doesn't necessarily have to affect my sense of worth. 
So as an example here, I was working with a client who really um, had this low sense of worth, so low sense of self-worth. And one of her early childhood memories was her father leaving. And she realized that she had always assumed that was something about her. You know, she was unlovable. She, you know, wasn't worth sticking around for. But going back into that memory and giving it a new meaning, she could make that memory nothing to do with her and her sense of worth. Using her adult logic, she could realize that actually, you know, it was more about, said more about her dad than what it did about her. She could create a new meaning from that experience that had nothing to do with her sense of worth. And here's the thing, our beliefs are not based upon facts. They are based upon how we have perceived certain experiences. It's all to do with our own interpretation of that event at that time. So a lot of this work then to really change how you feel about yourself and to really strength, strengthen that sense of worth is to identify like how were you interpreting events? How did you interpret interpret certain experiences perhaps as, an, as a child or you know even going through your childhood and into your adult life? How are you interpreting experiences and what belief has been formed because of that interpretation? How can you then reinterpret that experience, give it a new meaning, perceive it in a different way so that it doesn't have to affect your sense of worth or you know how good you are or how worthy you are or how deserving you are you can take your own sense of worth out of the equation you know it doesn't need to affect you now as i said because this often involves you know going into old memories sometimes quite painful memories this is why self love isn't always going to be rainbows and unicorns it's not always going to be this beautiful uplifting experience it can often mean a lot of tears a lot of anger a lot of frustration that you're letting go of but when you do commit to this work and you do start to identify you know where did i first learn how to not love myself where did i first start believing this about myself, believing these negative thoughts, when you start weeding those experiences, bringing them to the surface and start to reframe them and start to then really change your beliefs and how you believe and feel about yourself, you will notice a huge impact on the things that you start to manifest into your life. When you start to believe that you are enough without having to do more or without having to be more, that's when the magic of the universe is really going to kick in. When you believe wholeheartedly that you are enough just as you are, you are going to start to witness the most magical manifestations show up in your life. People, opportunities, success, money. I know this because I've seen it from my own experience. I've seen it from the experience, experiences of hundreds of clients that I have worked with. True self-love is about knowing that you are enough. And when you know that wholeheartedly with every inch of your being, that you are enough, the universe is always going to be working in your favor. Now, I actually want to finish up this episode by sharing with you a really beautiful mantra that I use to help me strengthen my sense of worth and really cultivate true self-love so that I could then manifest all of these amazing things into my life. And that mantra is, I am enough without needing to be more or do more. I am worthy of receiving without needing to be more or do more. I deserve to have all of my desires without needing to be more or do more. So it's really, really simple. And what I would suggest that you do is repeat this mantra back to yourself in front of a mirror every morning and every night 10 times okay and it might seem a really really simple thing but I started to do this a long time ago and I still do it to this day because although it's not the only thing that I've done to really cultivate my own self-love but I do know that this mantra has had a really powerful impact on my life and also my ability to manifest so yeah, I would suggest that you give it a go if this is something that you're working through right now. 
And just as a reminder, my book, Self Love and Spiritual Alchemy, which goes into this topic in much more detail, is available to purchase on Amazon. So that's Self Love and Spiritual Alchemy, or you can just search my name, Danny Watson, and it should also come up. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I very much look forward to connecting with you again very soon. All right, lots of love, ladies. Bye. <laughs> If you're wanting to build your own successful online coaching business, make sure to check out Freedom, Abundance and Impact, our free 10-day business and mindset course for coaches and aspiring coaches. To access, simply head to wearetheclick.com and click free course in the menu.